tables are finally in Google Sheets. I'm going to show you some of the customer relations example tables from Google Sheets. But before I get into that, if you do not have tables accessible and you're going to see it from insert tables or if you right click and you see tables here, if you do not see that, scroll down in the description, download this example template, and then you'll be able to have these in your own Google Sheets to be able to start using. All right, let's jump right in. So Google currently has two example templates for customer relations. The first is called customer contacts, and that table looks like this. The other one is called customer opportunity, which looks like this. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in a little bit to demo some of the quick features of tables now in Google Sheets. So first of all, a big one is their group by, and there's two ways to do this. One is you can go into the column, click this, and then do group by column. The other way is you can click on views and create group by view, and you can select any column there. And so for example, we could click department, and you can see it creates a group for each department. So if this is a view you want to revisit, you can click on save view. Otherwise, you can exit out. Another thing to note is in this view, you can also select other filters like you would using the filter view. So this is kind of a hybrid here. So if we don't want to save it, we can go ahead and just X out, don't save, and then we go back to normal. If you do save it, it'll be available here for later use. And so you can also toggle it from here. So if you go back to that view, you can exit that view from here. Next is looking at filtering. So often we do a, add a filter, right? And it's using this create filter here or create a filter from the data menu. Now the way it works in tables is you have to click here and then click filter column. And so it's still accessible, it just takes an extra click. The sort column is still here and you can do A to Z like this. So if we go over here, you can still sort by A to Z fairly quickly in there. Now another thing you can do is change the color. So under table menu here, you can customize the table colors and select basically just a header is what happens here. So you can select whatever color there. One thing I do want to note is you can do a manual color on this. So for example, you can just do whatever color you like here. However, now if you try to customize these table colors, it won't override this. And so if you happen to do this and you want to reset it, just select that header row and then click on reset. And once you do that, then you can do that. So you can also do some quick borders perhaps between if you like that look a little bit more or something like that. Another thing you can do is you can name tables. And so we'll revisit that in a moment when I show you some other examples on how to reference that. So inserting rows or columns. So you can insert columns or rows like normal. You can delete them. If you add more rows, it automatically fills in with anything that you had in the table. You can also add more columns on the right hand side if you like as well. So let's review a big feature with tables is these column types. And so you can set a column type now and it's going to ask and default to that input. So you can go from anything from numbers with number percent currency, you do text, you do dates, date time or time, drop downs like normal check boxes, you can use smart chips of course, or you can do none. And then of course they have these placeholders and this is just a sample data that's a place filler until you put some data in there. So once you put in your own data, the placeholder is gone. If you delete it, the placeholder is back. Okay, so that's the quick basics and setting stuff. If you want to delete a table, you can delete from here or you can revert to unformatted data if you like. Otherwise, if you need to manually adjust the table range, you can do that here if, you need, if it's not catching it for some reason. Other than that, let me show you how to reference some data. So I put in some sample data here with some estimated values and probabilities from the opportunities. And then over here, I just built a quick display to show you how to reference this. And so what you use is the table name. And so in the table name, you can rename it here. 
and whatever you want to call it. And so this is the default they had here. The one thing to note is you cannot do spaces. So it's a little bit like name ranges in that way. So once you name a table, it's accessible via any formula. So if we do sum and we start typing that cust op, you can see all those column names are available in that as well. And so now, just like name ranges, you can do a sum on a column just by typing the name of the table and then the name of the column inside of these brackets. And so you can do anything like count ifs, you can do query, you can do a sum product like this, you can do sum ifs, uh, a more complicated sum product with a filter. And so that is how you reference a table from Formulas. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Make sure to check out my other videos for the other templates that Google has to get an idea of how you can best use tables for your project moving forward. Thanks for watching. See you soon.